It's Tuesday the 21st of September 2010 and this is Photo Walkthrough episode number 135, Tutorial 20, Chapter 4. Hello and welcome back to Photo Walkthrough. On today's show we've got the last chapter in Tutorial 20 where we're going to go back into Lightroom 3, the brand new version of Lightroom, and we're going to use the labels, the fashion labels that we've created in the previous episodes using Photoshop and uh, make our slideshow at last. So before we do that I would like to say thank you as always to today's show sponsor, which is Angie's List. Now, whenever something goes wrong with your car or something goes wrong with your house, you need somebody to come and do work on it that you can trust. And usually, it's about going and finding somebody in your family that's used these guys. But if you don't know anybody in the area or if you're not getting any good recommendations, then the best place to go is Angie's List. Angie's List is a great service uh, that's localized. It's regional in your area. You'll find that there are tons of reviews from people that have used local contractors in your area and have reviewed how good they were and have put a review up on Angie's List and that's what you're buying with Angie's List. You're buying peace of mind and if something does go wrong they've got a complaint resolution service that will help you sort it out. So as a photo walk reviewer you get a 25% discount, it's a massive discount, on the Angie's List service by using the promo code PHOTO when you sign up. I definitely recommend them. Go along to Angie'sList.com the next time something needs doing on your house or your car or a healthcare professional and check them out. Thank you to Angie's List for supporting Photo Walkthrough. We couldn't do it without you. Okay, let's jump on and do today's tutorial 20, chapter 4. And as I say, we're going to be doing a lot of work in the brand new version of Lightroom 3. Let's check it out. Here's our slideshow button. And uh, there are a few new features here in the slideshow um, uh, uh, tool. Uh, in Lightroom. So uh, let's just quickly dash down these and I'm going to, rather than using the, the tags images, I'm going to use these Catherine painting for images that I took uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, Catherine was doing some painting in the garden and it was it was a lot of fun so I thought we'd um, take some pictures of that and use those. Uh, so we've got a whole bunch of options that were the same as before. We can, when we when we're setting up our slideshow, we can zoom to fill frame. We can stroke the border, and in this case, you can see I've done a big thick white line around the border. I'd like to have a, a sort of a almost like a print style here, um, and we've also got a cast shadow here on this, so uh, and that looks like it's sort of sitting above our background. Um, we can set our layout. We can change how big the the image should be on the screen there. Um, I've turned off the the linking the top so that I could set this up and, and, and leave some space for the tag at the bottom. Um, now here's where we're going to use our, our new graphic. Uh, we've got an identity plate and we've got um, if we click on the graphic or on the text, you've probably got text in your case at the moment, and click edit, we've got two options. We can use styled text here, or we can use a graphical identity plate. And in our case, we're going to do locate file, and we're going to go to our Dropbox, and we're going to choose PW Tag 5, the one that we just made. So that's PW Tag 5 is selected. I'm going to press OK. And you can see this one I've done as, a, as, a, as an upwards one rather than a downwards one. Um, I want my opacity set to completely opaque and I can set my scale to make the different size um, but we need it at the top rather than at the bottom so I'm going to turn back on that, that edge linking um, for top and I'm going to turn off the bottom edge linking um, so that we can set the bottom a different distance from the edge rather than the top um, so now I can drag the bottom edge independently and the others don't move with it um, so I'm going to click on my identity tag and you can see the identity tag, I can move it around. Can you see how the dot is snapping to different places on the image? So I can do that by that uh, by just moving it around to approximately where I want or I can manually grab that corner and snap it to the point on the image I want it to snap to. And in this case I want it to snap to the top edge and I'm going to put that about there. And what this is doing is it's saying I will always put this identity plate, um, this dis this uh, relative position, to the snapping point. Um, so in this case, it's going to be just in a bit and up a bit from that snapping point in the top left corner. If I choose an image with a different uh, aspect ratio, it'll do the same thing to the top left corner of that image. So it's always right in, re in relation to the image that we're applying it to. 
Um, one other little trick you may have noticed I've I've been if I drag this up and down it's going behind the image this is one of our, our new uh, options here we can click the render behind image tick box, tick box here to move the um, the identity plate in front or behind um, our image and in this case I think behind works better because sometimes you want to just have it uh, uh, not quite so large maybe you want to drag it down a little bit just to give it a little bit of uh, um, uh, to make it look a little bit less uh, intrusive on the picture and you can use your cursor keys here as well to move it up and down I'm just pressing the up and down keys there to position that where I want it so I think there looks pretty good um, my scales about right my, my opacity is about right we've also got a brand new feature here watermarking um, and if we click on that we can edit watermarks um, and uh, this is just like the watermarking in the published services that I showed you in the last show um, but as well as text we can also here do a graphic we can also here choose one of our tags if we wish so let's choose PW tag 5 the one we just made and I can stick that here in the bottom of our image and if necessary I can make it larger or smaller and I can make it so that we've tagged our image in just the same way obviously it needs to go in rather than out but we can do uh, a, a graphical watermark just the same as we can do a text watermark uh, obviously the text options don't apply here but we can still do things like opacity and we can still do size and we can make it so that it fits in if we wish or it fills the frame if we wish that might be useful if you're doing something like um, a stock photography site where you want to put one of those nice big logos right over the image so it's not usable um, so you could do all sorts of different things with this watermarking tool we can also set the distance from the corner that we're bound to I don't want to do a vertical but I do want to do a horizontal and I can set it to a particular corner if I wish by choosing the anchors here and of course I can also rotate it if I wish um, in this case I think I'll probably just go with that bottom left corner and a little bit of inward space and save that and so I can save that as PW tag so we can watermark our images as well as adding these as an identity plate in this case obviously I don't want to do that but if we wanted to we could um, there's a couple more options here that were in previous versions rating stars text overlays we can do a shadow if we wish on our identity plate um, which I think probably I do want to um, we can do a color wash which is just like previous versions we've got a background image you can see in this case I dragged one of the other images into the background and I set it very uh, very transparent with a white background behind it just to give it a sort of a, a watermark style um, we've got a couple of new features here um, we've got the intro screen and the ending screen and really all they are is a uh, um, in this case a black screen with so look there you go simple as that there's, there's really nothing magical to it um, you can put text on there you can put graphics on there um, and it's just going to be a, a slide with whatever background color you've chosen and whatever you choose on top of it um, and that's it and the same thing at the end we can do an ending screen if we wish um, I, I think very unexciting I must say um, and of course we can choose a soundtrack here we can select a, a, a piece of music that we want to play along with our slideshow um, it understands that I've got two screens here and I can tell it which screen I want to play the slideshow on I can have it blank the other screen which is a sensible thing to do if, you do, if you're working this way uh, and of course we can set the slide durations and repeat and prepare previews in advance just makes the slideshow run more smoothly when you run it because if you're working with very large images you'll all be aware if you've got Lightroom that it does a certain amount of uh, loading and loading and loading when it wants to produce the full size version of an image um, and you really want to make sure that it doesn't have to do that while you're actually running the slideshow so um, uh, there's our play button let's just quickly check this out and we can see that that's looking pretty tidy we've got our tag at the top left and here we go from image to image and when we get an image that's a different proportion we'll see that the tag moves relative to the top left corner of, of that image so that's looking pretty good we've got one final new trick here in the slideshow um, uh, feature of Lightroom uh, and that is we've got some new export options uh, we can export our slideshow as a PDF the PDF format's got quite a lot of capability for for doing things like slideshows it can um, 
it, you, it can understand that we need to do sort of uh, uh, time slideshows and stuff or we can do an export video uh, which if I click it um, I'm just going to do this onto the desktop rather than into the Dropbox um, gives us the option to save our um, Catherine painting slideshow and we can set it, we choose a video preset various different sizes um, as it says here these are optimized for YouTube or Facebook they look pretty great to be honest with you you can even do a 1080p one if you wish let's just stick with 720p remember YouTube does HD now so you, there's not really any reason to go any less than 720p um, export that and that will save that file uh, as uh, an mp4 video which you can use in all sorts of different places it's a very uh, very handy video format so I'm just going to stop that because it might be interfering with recording so I'll cancel that task um, so that's us done that's um, how you might want to make a little a little tag for your slideshows um, how you can do that from an original photograph how you can produce it in Photoshop using some of the brand new features there and how you can then come into Lightroom 3 and use some of the brand new features here um, I hope you found that useful remember you can find loads of other video tutorials on photowalkthrough.com they're all free um, all we ask is that you uh, consider using an advertiser if it's something you're interested in uh, otherwise just tell your friends the, the show will remain free uh, so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. All the best. Okay, that's us done for another week. Thank you again for watching. I think our next tutorial, tutorial 21, will be another Photoshop tutorial and I'm going to be doing a landscape image that I thought was irretrievable but uh, was a beautiful scene at the time and I think I've rescued it and in fact turned it into something that's worthy of hanging on the wall. Tune in for that one. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Please help support the show by using our sponsor's promo codes or by passing the promo codes on to your friends. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. photocastnetwork.com your photography resource in the potosphere photocastnetwork.com